what's the time? Um, it's about one o'clock right now. And I've got um, 45 minutes. I thought I had an hour. I'm going to try to compress everything um, that I would love to um, share with you today uh, within 45 minutes. So um, some of it may speed up, or if I've got ample time, some of it may shoot down. So, um, okay, so uh, some of you, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for um, coming along today. Um, some of you are familiar with um, uh, what I do, uh, some of you may not. I had a gentleman over here ask me just now, is this the evolution shortcuts thing? He's probably looking at the dolls wondering what's going on over here. <laughs> uh, but uh, for some of you uh, who are not familiar uh, with what I do, um, I'm originally from the UK, uh, currently live in uh, Japan. I've been in Japan for about 20 years. Uh, my IT, uh, my IT is background. My background is um, IT, uh, previously website manager for Amazon, uh, product manager for Microsoft. Uh, left corporate uh, life um, because I decided I wanted to make um, lovely fashion dolls, and so that's what I do. And uh, within this process, and also within my career, um, there are things which um, I've learned um, in life, and I feel that um, other folks would benefit. Uh, from the learnings um, which I've had and um, I feel that um, it's in my interests uh, and everyone's interests to um, share um, experiences that they have um, in life. Alright, so I'm going to start with, oops, alright, um, so this is the first time I'm using this um, software. Uh, before I used to make a keynote and it'll have like lots of bullet points and what I would find is that I get carried away and I've already spoken about the next slide, so you go to the next slide, it's really awkward. And um, so I'm using this mind mapping um, tool. So what I'd like to talk about is um, understanding um, evolution. And it may sound like a really boring um, subject, but it's um, fundamental. It's really important uh, for us to know um, why we are the way that we are, and how society has put us in particular positions, and um, some people may not realize um, some of these things and they end up dying and regretting it um, for the rest of um, eternity. So, anyway, so we're going to talk about um, understanding evolution, uh, something called uh, natural selection. Uh, and lots of this is uh, very brief, it's like um, a, um, a quick evolution for dummies um, type of thing. And so we have uh, modern human history and hardwired uh, human instinct. Okay, so first off, um, I'd like to talk about um, something called a natural selection. So um, I watch, um, so I'm going to have to keep track on my, um, my timekeeping from time to time. And so I watch nature programs, and uh, I hear something like, well, this hummingbird has grown this really long beak, so it can get at the nectar uh, in this really deep flower with like really long petals, and I used to think, well, well, how does that work? It's like a hummingbird comes along, and oh god, the nectar is like really deep down. Let me just grow a long beak, and um, and I was wondering, well, does it really work that way? And uh, so, I mean, for humans, if it worked that way, it would be like, well, I don't get on the subway. You call it metro over here, right? I don't get on the metro because that's full of weird people. And uh, you know, lots of weird people on your metro. It's like really, really interesting. But anyway, so um, to avoid weird people, I'm meeting the crowds. Let me just like grow some wings. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't quite um, work like that. And so uh, basically, um, all living beings, uh, whether it's plants, um, amphibians, mammals, um, and so on and so on, we all have a need to um, survive and uh, reproduce. And that's all built, um, built into us. And um, given that, there's also lots of environmental factors which um, affect um, the way that we um, have evolved. So a long time ago, there used to be this um, huge supercontinent. So the whole world used to be in this big, big lump and called a Pangaea. And then over many moons, uh, due to continental drift, um, all these continents drifted apart. And uh, once they drifted apart, lots of oceanic and wind waves, they really change uh, the Earth's climate and um, amongst, while the Earth's climate was changing, lots of life on, on Earth was um, adapting um, at the same time as well. So uh, genetic mutations, so um, I only knew of mutants from the X-Men movie and I thought it was something like made up 
but it's actually something that um, happened um, throughout um, evolution. So um, when a male and a female mate, and uh, they have um, offspring, uh, their genes are passed down to their offspring. And usually uh, what happens is that perfect copies of their genes are supposed to be passed down. Uh, but sometimes uh, mistakes are made, and these are called um, genetic uh, mutations. And basically what happens is, let's say for the case of the polar bear, so the polar bear uh, evolved from the brown bear, and let's say there was a, an ice age, uh, for example, and um, there was a genetic mutation uh, within a brown bear, and its offspring had um, white fur. Now, um, the brown bear uh, in that particular area, they may slowly die off because the prey, they can see a brown bear coming from like a mile away. But uh, with the polar bear, now that it has white fur, it has um, a survival advantage um, to go after its prey. And uh, that's, how, uh, that's how evolution works, basically. And so um, the brown bears may die from that area, but because the polar bears have this survival advantage, they get to pass on their genes um, to um, their offspring. So for modern humans, uh, for example, uh, we, due to, again, due to lots of environmental changes, um, we developed um, various um, genetic mutations. Um, so we gained the ability to uh, walk upright, um, use tools, and uh, we grew um, a larger brain as well. And so it just happened to be that um, an ice age, about two million years ago, was when humans started slowly moving out um, of Africa because there was um, an ice age over there. And being able to walk upright really helped us to like, move um, out of um, that continent. So that's basically a very brief rundown of um, how um, evolution works. I was talking to my friend um, back over there, his name is Abshisa San. He has, he's, got, he's telling me how he, um, at a very young age, he had like white hair. So he would have a survival advantage if there was an ice age, right? <laughs> and uh, there was um, brain-eating crows like flying the skies. So they would easily go after poor folks like me, uh, who had uh, black hair, but because he's got white hair, he would blend in with the snow. So we would all die off, and there'll be loads of um, cheese sands um, all over. Uh, so that, that's basically how um, evolution works. So now I'd like to talk about uh, modern human history. So we've uh, ventured out of Africa all, um, all around the world, and uh, for millions and millions of years, we were um, hunter-gatherers. So we um, rummaged around the savannas, um, hunting for food, um, like gathering sticks, and basically, we were um, a bunch of nomads, basically roaming the land and uh, living um, as we traveled. And then, one day, um, one of these um, prehistoric humans had the bright idea to um, plant um, their food, and that's basically when uh, the agricultural revolution started. So, instead of like hunting for food, they planted seeds, and they didn't have to like um, go out and venture and risk be eaten by predators, they would like plant their seeds and so on and so on, and uh, they basically grow the food. Now, because they did this, what happened was they needed to protect um, all the plants that they were growing. So, from this um, evolved um, villages, which then grew to towns, uh, which then grew to cities, uh, which then grew to empires. And a uh, lot of it was about protecting uh, their crops and protecting their people. And uh, this is how um, societies formed. So um, a king would appear and um, build a wall around this village and say, I'm going to protect you, and, uh, but just like, um, give me some um, taxes. I'm going to take some money from you in, uh, in the form of taxes, uh, but I'm going to protect you. And this is kind of what um, society is, um, is like today. Um, so, um, lots of, many, it may seem like very, very obvious, but we are taught to um, go to a good school um, so that we can get, to, get into a good college, get into a good university, get a good job, get a decent salary. And uh, then you can maybe buy a big house, uh, you can get like, a mortgage for it, uh, put some money aside for a pension, um, go to work the next day, save more money, put more money aside for a pension, 
pay your taxes, and then it just like goes on and on and on. And um, most of us don't realize this, and then we, um, we, we kick the bucket basically. So um, this is uh, basically um, how we have grown um, in, in these societies. So it is said that um, humans don't function um, optimally in groups of more than um, 150 people. Uh, but when you have more than 150 people, you really need um, like rules um, in place to basically um, keep us in, in order. And this is what our society does to us. So um, in a society like this, there's lots of um, roles um, and expectations. So uh, there's lots of hierarchies as well, uh, whereby there are uh, they're like managers, they're like um, program managers, they are like um, QA developers, and there's there's lots of hierarchies of um, like all over the place, like in society um, and so on and so on. And um, one of the things which I want to talk about, this is kind of like a, a side topic, but um, it's something I feel very strongly about. And it's about the hierarchy of um, the consumer. And um, in, I'm sure it's the same in America, but in Japan, there's a saying, the customer is God. Okiyaku-sama wa kami-sama. So um, I think in the US, you say something like, um, the consumer is king. Um, but um, yeah, in, basically in Japan, um, the customer is God. And um, so I, I find this like uh, very, very interesting. Um, in Japan, uh, many, many, many uh, folks, they uh, commit suicide due to um, karoshi. So karoshi is a specific word given to people who die from overworking. Die from overworking becomes like one word, karoshi. And it's um, so common that they, they, they call word for it. And um, you see it on like, um, the news all the time. And um, these poor souls, they die from overworking. And I think it's because um, they've put the customer as being um, number one. Now, for all our organization, if we put um, the customer as um, number one, let's have a look. Oh, go back. If we put uh, the customer at um, the first slot, that means the employees they would have to become the second slot. And uh, for me, this doesn't um, this doesn't run too well. Um, so, despite, despite um, being uh, a Japanese company, um, we are very different in the way that we do business. Um, so our folks go up at 6 o'clock, which is very rare uh, for our line of work. And um, it's, I feel it's very important for folks to like, go home, wind down, and um, have their own private, uh, private time, basically. So if you take 24 hours and you split into three, and let's say 8 hours is for work, let's just say 8 hours is for sleep, you've got 8 hours left, but that's not necessarily for yourself. A lot of that is for like travel, uh, for um, uh, for co commuting, uh, for hygiene, for eating, and then you're left with only like a, a few hours a day, and there's not much you can do with that. So I feel it's very important that um, employees um, get that time. So for us, um, the, um, consumers are actually um, ranked number three. So we have um, employees number one, and then it is um, the quality um, of the products, uh, which are number two. And I find that if you do put consumers before everything, then you start to sacrifice not only on your um, employees, uh, but the quality um, of the product as well. So um, I could make these for a third of the cost and sell them to you for a third of the cost, but I don't want to, uh, because I want to like, focus on um, the quality. Now, um, my Mac is made in China, my iPhone is made in China, my grandparents are made in China. And, um, and uh, like China has uh, lots of great stuff. But um, I personally uh, want to keep um, everything in Japan, whereby um, there is a certain level of worksmanship, which is um, it's just, it's just fantastic, really. And um, that's what I, I really, really uh, want to continue focusing on with it, when it comes down to um, the type of materials that we use, um, the amount of work that goes into uh, creating the detail. The, the cost is very high, um, and that reflects in the price, but um, I do believe that uh, once you um, build a quality product, then there will be people out there um, like you um, who would um, want it. Okay, so that's my rant about um, consumers. And also, uh, when you start, um, I wanted to flip to this over here. Oh, it's gone now. It is over here. Okay, so this I saw on your on your metro, and um, you see these um, signs. What does it say? It says it says sorting. 
MTA New York City Transit Subway personnel is a felony punishable by up to seven years in prison. That's seven years with a big seven in red. And uh, so you see these signs in London. You know, I go back to the UK and it's like bus drivers are being beaten up. Um, I was on a bus the other day and the bus driver stopped a little bit and this guy in the back of the bus just like yelling at the bus driver. And uh, you get these signs in, um, in, in Japan as well, whereby drunkards, uh, salary, drunk salary men, they beat up um, these train, uh, train drivers. Now I think that consumers have been put on a certain, certain high expectation and that if um, I were to continue to cultivate that sort of behavior, then I think more people um, who are like doing the best in the service sector uh, would end up suffering, and um, I think that's completely uh, unacceptable. Uh, I want to write a, a book about this um, the other day, whereby um, the customer should be treated more as a, as a business partner. And so, uh, as a maker, we don't look down um, on consumers, uh, we treat them um, uh, with respect um, as business partners, basically, whereby um, I give you these goods and you give me um, those goods, uh, which just happens to be uh, money. So I think we've grown up in a society whereby it's like, well, I'm giving you money, so I'm better than you, uh, type of thing. And it's, um, it's not really how um, I think it um, should work. Alrighty, let's get back to my um, mind map over here. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the some hard, hardwired human instincts that we have um, gained uh, as we um, went through evolution um, throughout um, millions and millions of years. So first off, we all of us come with like pre-installed um, rules, like a chemical reaction, innate um, behavior, which has helped us um, to survive. And and um, my throat is. I need a, I need some water. Give me a second. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. So, um, so there are good things and bad things about um, the built-in behaviors, uh, behaviors that we have. So, um, some of the bad um, loss version. So, uh, whatever we try to do, we uh, we tend to not like losing stuff, and you know, it's not, it's not really fun. Uh, you drop your iPhone and oh god, where's my iPhone? Yeah, it's, it's not that, uh, it's not really fun. Uh, but um, there are some things which um, this loss aversion, uh, like a long time ago, it, it was great. I mean, living out in um, a savannah whereby resources are very scarce, um, you tend to like, cling on to um, everything you have. And um, it goes with the second point over here risk aversion. Um, we try to take as little risks um, as possible. And let's say, for example, you hear a rustle in the bush, and you, you don't really want to like stick around to like figure out whether it's going to be a predator that's going to eat you. You want to like uh, basically run away um, as far as you can. And that is actually uh, point um, uh, two point four um, over here. We tend to react a lot um, before reasoning, and I think it's uh, fair to say that lots of this um, reaction. Um, has really helped us um, survive and evolve uh, through the ages. Uh, but today, a loss of version, I see this as very um, relatable to um, hoarding. So, oh, I've tried to um, simplify my life as much as possible by basically getting rid of um, junk, which I, I don't really use, and uh, basically streamlining um, what I have around me and being as light as possible. So I know like, so many folks who have had like, great career opportunities, but they've, they've turned them down because they, they've got a house full of stuff. And um, it's like, well, what, what are you talking about? Um, and if you think about it, um, when you die, you can't take anything with you. And so I think it's very important to live a life um, and basically live a life to its fulfillment. And, not to care too much about like physical objects that you have, which you can't take with you anyway. And um, so again, yeah, I have like lots of people very close to me who have um, the opportunities to like live different lives, but they've got like an apartment or a house full of stuff that they don't really use, and it's just like gathering dust. And um, you have to spend time dusting them down, you have to uh, find places to put them, and it, it really is um, just a waste of time. So um, there's lots of folks that buy our smart dolls. Um, I'm very happy that they do. And there's many of them that buy um, all our smart dolls. And I 
again, I, I, I am very happy. Uh, what I would personally uh, like is if folks buy maybe one or two and buy clothes for them and spend the rest of the money uh, maybe taking them um, around the world and traveling. So traveling is very, very important. Uh, it makes you very humble. You are put into this situation whereby you don't know anything. You're, like, you're a foreigner in a foreign land. Uh, the language is different, things are different, words are different, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very um, humbling. So, uh, to be honest, uh, that's what I prefer you to do um, with your money. And buy some clothes for them at the same time, from time to time. Okay, where was I? Okay, so, uh, risk aversion. So, um, this, we are in an age whereby we live in a very comfortable um, situation, uh, many of us. And uh, we don't need to hunt for our food anymore. Uh, we don't have predators lying around uh, trying to eat us, apart from on the internet in, in the form of trolls. And um, so we, we are very comfortable. And there's, there's not much um, need uh, to take a risk, whereby a long time ago, there's lots of environmental factors, lots of predators trying to eat us. And that really helped us evolve um, through those um, uh, DNA uh, genetic mutations. But these days, I think that uh, many folks are com comfortable uh, without taking uh, these sort of risks. But um, what's going to happen is that you end up living in the, the mold that society has built for you um, until the day you die. And uh, for some folks, that's absolutely fine. And uh, but for some others, you know, there's, there's probably something in the back of your mind thinking um, that there's something more to this. That um, there could be something else uh, that you want to do. And lots of that really involves um, taking a risk. And so I've taken many risks um, in my life. And um, I think you can see this in the way that um, I'm going to take this risk, um, but am I going to die from it? And um, if you're not really going to die from it, then I think maybe it could be a risk uh, worth taking. Now, if you think, well, I could take this risk, but I could lose everything that I have. And, but you have to think about what is everything that is it all these physical things? Is it this, um, is it this house? Is it this apartment? Um, I think that what's going to help you take lots of risks is to arm yourself with, um, with knowledge and, and the skills so that if you lost absolutely everything, you can pick up um, from day one. You can just like, pick up uh, from um, from the day that you lost everything. So um, it's very important to like, arm yourself with lots of different skills. So it doesn't matter whether you are, um, you've got a full-time job uh, or you're like, going to school, there's always things that you could be doing on the side. Uh, for myself, um, I learned Japanese. Without Japanese, there's absolutely no way I could do business uh, in Japan. And uh, without um, learning like, 3D um, graphics on the side, or without learning uh, like programming, uh, like scripting languages, there's like no way I would have been able to um, go through my um, career um, in Japan. Anyway, so it's very important to think about um, these sort of risks that um, there's lots that your body is telling you because lots of it is chemically built in. So the chemical takes over. It's like an anesthesia, you know, someone kind of give you um, like a local anaesthetic, and you want to fight it, but it's, it, it takes over you first, and there's not a lot that your conscious um, can do at that particular time. So I'm going to talk about some um, the good stuff, the good stuff that's touching. Okay, I'm going to talk about the, the good stuff uh, in terms of um, the built-in um, human instincts. So, um, compete, that's 3.1 um, over here. So, um, all living beings have um, a need um, to compete. And if you have a look at uh, butterflies, for example, so the male butterflies, they would gather in this area, they would like, try to fly higher um, than the rest uh, to impress the females. And then there are, um, there's this particular bird, and it goes and builds this nest, and it gathers lots of rubbish and lots of brightly colored, uh, like sweet wrappers, and it decorates this nest to, um, to impress the females. And um, so there's lots of different uh, behaviors like this all over the animal kingdom. And it's the same um, with um, humans as well. So there's a strong need in us um, to compete. And you know, I think this is, this is okay. Um, so there is, um, so heterotroph, am I pronouncing, pronouncing it? Heterotroph, heterotroph, uh, are uh, basically beings which survive from eating other beings. 
and then autotrophs are beings which basically generate um, its own energy, so like plants using photosynthesis uh, to generate um, energy uh, for itself. So I think that life is uh, life can be hard, and um, having passion alone is um, it can be quite difficult to like achieve something. But um, there's another force which I think is um, it's kind of helpful. It's, it's helped me a lot um, in my past as well. I call it the forging force, also known as just as keikaku. Keikaku means plan. <laughs> okay. So uh, throughout my career, um, I have encountered um, many trolls in life, and it's very easy to encounter trolls. So, so it's very easy to take a passion and change it into um, something very powerful for yourself. So, let's say um, so I met a guy this morning, and he was talking about like taking photos and of dolls and stuff. And uh, so I said, okay, uh, what you can do is you can start taking um, photos um, of your dolls, posting it online. And um, so I didn't get to finish the conversation, but I'm going to finish it with you over here. And so what you can do is, once you start posting that online, you'll, you know, you'll gather like a nice following of like nice people. And then the creepy crawlies come out to play. So um, you'll start getting controlled for whatever you do, whatever you do in life. There's going to be um, people who uh, don't like uh, what you do. And it's usually people who are interested in the same sort of field, but they just like don't like the way that you're doing something. Most probably because you're like, doing better than them, or uh, whatever. They're going to make excuses um, anyway. And um, they're going to be like, trolling the hell out of you. So a lot of people I've known, um, they actually give up what they're doing. Uh, because of these trolls. So whether it's cosplaying, or like drawing, or like taking photos of dolls, um, or like playing with Star Wars figures, whatever, they like, just, like give up just because of these trolls. And it's a, it's a, it's a very bad time. So what you can do, you can take this um, trollism, and you can change this power into, you can just basically fuse it uh, with this um, competitive power um, inside of you, and instead of lashing back at this troll, you use it to, uh, use it to forge forward and um, you use it to uh, basically drive yourself um, to do good in life. And uh, to be honest, um, smart dolls have not only um, come to reality through just pure passion, there was lots of forging force uh, behind uh, making these dolls. And I think that if it's something that we can tap into, you know, I don't think there's um, anything wrong with it. Find your passion, uh, grow some trolls, Take some of that trollism, force uh, merge it with your um, competitive um, built-inness, and then um, and then forge forward. Okay, so uh, frustration. So um, humans, we get like frustrated, and um, I think I, I had it as a point earlier on, but I didn't. Um, uh, I've got to talk about it. Um, so frustration is a point whereby uh, lots of people give up, and I think that it's a way of saying, look, you've tried to hunt this. Um, this rodent in this area for like many, many moons and, and you just can't catch it. You know, you should give up, like save some energy and um, because out of these savannas where resources are very scarce, you need to save some energy. And I think that that um, built-in frustration has helped us really save energy um, in the past and maybe concentrate on like other areas. Uh, but I think that in today's um, society, it can be the source of um, giving up. And I see lots of people um, giving up um, on their dreams, giving up on what they're doing, and so on and so on. Uh, but I think that, for me, frustration is, you know, I just want to fix this, you know. It's like really, it's just annoying, you know. This, this frustration is not, it's not something that makes me want to give up. It just makes me uh, annoyed and, and really want to fix it. So you can really turn it around and turn it into um, a form of motivation. So um, another thing that um, humans um, gained was the ability to um, imagine the future. And I think that we gained that from memories of the past. So um, let's say that, um, so humans have very good pattern recognition. And that comes from basically um, understanding the stars. And that's how we gained our ability to basically navigate the Earth. And from recognizing these patterns, 
uh, we can say, well, the stars were over here yesterday and the day before and blah, blah, blah. So they're probably going to be over here the next day. And that really helped us um, navigate the Earth. And it also helped us imagine how things would be if we made them. So uh, once we started, um, basically, instead of like putting um, like animal hides on, like, around us, we learned how to sew. And that came from, well, if I took this um, saber tooth and put a hole in it and put some um, string through it, then I'll be able to like sew them together. And so I think that we do have um, lots of um, great imagination to really help us visualize uh, what we want. So another thing that uh, we have is uh, consciousness. So um, it's not exactly certain what consciousness, consciousness exactly what it derives from, um, but uh, humans do have it. And I think that it enables us to um, really think about um, like all the things which I've spoken about before, all the built in, everything that's genetically built into us, which basically stops us uh, from doing this, uh, basically stops us from moving forward. If we are aware of this, then we can actually train ourselves. We can like grow our neural networks um, in our brains. and give it to you. Yeah. We, we can abstract. That's right, that's right, yeah. And um, so basically, I forgot what I was talking about now. <laughs> so, that's okay, so. So, um, oh, that was a good one. That's a good one. So, completely threw me off. So anyway, what I was talking about. Uh, so, it's, we have the ability to, um, when we learn something, we build, we strengthen our neural networks um, in, within our brains. So for folks learning, uh, who learn to play like an instrument, there's a certain part um, in our brain which has, uh, is very dense um, in the neural networks. And that's because um, we um, can do something um, firsthand. So when you first learn to ride a bike, when I went to Japan, like, I couldn't ride a bike, and Japan being a very bicycle, Society, it was um, it was like a necessity almost. And uh, I went to Japan. I'm riding this bike, and it's like, oh, do I turn this way? And there's like no, there's no particular rules, right? I mean, if you ask someone, hey, how do you ride a bike? And oh yeah, you just like get on it, and you just like um, you just like pedal, and uh, it, it's not so simple. You really have to like learn yourself. So I'm on I'm on the road. The car comes along. Do I turn this way? But if I turn this way, I'm going to crash into the cars on the side. If I turn that way, then I'm going to be in front of the car which is coming along. And uh, it's just like something that you like learn. And at the beginning, it's, it's really, really tiring. And after like a short bike ride, it's like, oh God, I'm exhausted. And then, um, so that's how your brain works. It builds these neural networks so that you don't use as much energy that you need to do a particular task. So after a while, uh, you're able to like ride a bike and um, it is very simple. Uh, you don't get tired at all. It comes as first nature. So um, as long as we can start to um, understand this, then we can really think about how we are programmed uh, from birth and how we can use our consciousness to basically override um, those settings. Alrighty, so I kind of like whizzed through that because I wasn't too sure uh, how much time uh, we had. And uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, evolution, I keep going to, uh, I'm supposed to go here and do this. So that's uh, what I wanted to talk about and I hope that was useful for you. Um, it's also very useful for me. Um, I, wish, uh, I wish I had time to do a PhD um, because I'd be like studying this stuff and um, I'll write a book on it. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. All right, as you can guess, um, hold on. I've got 15 minutes before we're chucking out time. So, um, there's more, there's more, okay. So, did I show you, did I show you this video last year? Who's here last year? Did I show you any videos? No. Okay, so this is a very personal video. And uh, so I've still showed it um, this year, uh, because I think it's, um, it's time that, um, it's time that you saw this video. Okay, so I'm going to play the video. Uh, let's check the volume. Okay. Okay, it's six lens. <clears throat> it is the. I don't know date is there. It's the 13th of uh, June 2014. And um, today, today is. I'm 
we end up with this time time shipping um, our Mira Chandong uh, over here, as you can see, um, all lined up. So I just managed to make about 20 uh, yesterday, gonna make another 10 today, and um, yeah, we're shipping. Finally, um, it's been um, it's been a tough journey, and it's, uh, the journey seems to be a bit tougher, uh, lots of hurdles, and um, yeah, it's kind of tough. I'm working out of this uh, place in a new spear house, um, the floor is just a little damaged. It's uh, becoming um, quite bad. Uh, let me show you upstairs so you know exactly what I'm talking about. <coughs> Anyway, so this is where we are packing, um, well, well, assembling the boxes um, up here. Uh, it's getting very hot um, because it's, uh, it's just started um, to be summer. Right now, uh, just like full of stuff, I mean, we used to, we used to sleep here, actually. Anyway. And uh, over here, uh, this used to be my first ever office, uh, and now it's a uh, it's shit. Uh, some empty boxes over here, ready to be filled up. Taki Makara and Mirai Chan over here. Uh, some development bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, bits and pieces. Uh, this is just Mirai Chan over here, she's relaxing. And um, some figures which I brought up um, here. Uh, let's go downstairs. to H. Uh, stuff should be coming along soon. And um, turn on the here. Here. Um, And this is where we um, make uh, assembly of the dolls. It's got some um, stuff down there. It's over here, and um, as you can see, it's um, been like hardly, hardly move over here. Um, it's, um, it's been tough, right? It's been tough, work, but um, we can get through this. We can get through this because working with restrictions is uh, is the best way to grow. And um, which is what I keep telling myself. So um, I know this is definitely worth it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and then over here is um, I mean, this is the way we used to be where we take a shower, and now it's uh, full of. Um, Oh, it used to be worse because um, it was like, all stuck to the ceiling. But we managed to like um, clear out um, some of the parts. That's about it for here. Let's go back upstairs. Some doors. Some of the tools are going to run. <coughs> anyway, um, yeah, I don't think um, we're out of. Uh, some years running this company, this has been um, the most difficult, really the most difficult part. Um, yeah, I mean, we've done, we've, you know, we've done web pages, we've done like, uh, TV shows, uh, but making actual products is, um, there is so much involved. Um, but anyway, um, we can get through this. We can get through this because we can. And I'll be watching this sometime in the future in our big new office uh, where we don't have to like step over or have stock barricade us in so that we can't move. And also be watching this video when uh, we are able to like, move back home. And so this is our home and I want to like move back as soon as possible. And I think the Nina Chan uh, is going to help me. Okay, we'll be seeing this video sometime in the future, hopefully in a better circumstances. Right. Okay, so uh, I've got um, a follow-up video uh, which was taken um, this year.
and um, so this is um, this is room uh, where we um, started building a small job. And uh, this is where we make a small hotel now uh, in uh, Kutanda, Tokyo. And so um, I've got like a um, lot of time left, so I'm going to try to breeze through these. So um, over the past four years, we have grown uh, a very, very large. Um, <laughs> It's your water. That's it. It's your water. <laughs> um, very grown, very large um, customer base um, around the world. So um, our kids uh, segment is um, is actually much more bigger than um, I thought it was going to be. And uh, thanks to our kids, we have basically factored into our new designs lots of um, stress um, absorption um, into the design, uh, particularly of the frame. So if you take like um, an angle uh, like this. And uh, you try to like break it apart. Um, it's going to break up the corner of there. But if you put like a curve, then this curve uh, basically absorbs uh, lots of stress. So uh, we are making a new frame, and that is going to basically be. It's not going to be like um, if you throw out the car, like you break, but uh, it should be uh, mini Hulk um, resistance. Uh, resistance. <laughs> anyway, so uh, lots of kids uh, buy stuff, and sometimes um, adults uh, buy. Um, our stuff as well. They, I mean, they say it's for the kids, but it's actually for them. Um, so, yeah, it's so this is actually um, a sensei. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes before checking out time. So this is actually um, a sensei, and um, who's from? Wait, sensei. Wait. Sensei. Sensei. Hi. So uh, we've actually got our smart dolls in uh, schools. Uh, we have them in uh, Taiwan, uh, in Kanakawa schools. Uh, we have them in Japan, and we want to introduce them into uh, American schools as well, so that uh, folk can, folks can use them um, as a reference for uh, maybe engineering or like drawing, uh, fashion design, and so on and so on. So uh, we're going to be working together um, on this very soon. Um, I'd like to really quickly talk about the smart little cortex. So cortex is a way for me to basically be able to make um, much more and um, at a much more affordable price. So soft vinyl, uh, at most I can make a thousand units a month. And it's a very, 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 very slow process. Um, but with um, injection molding, I can make tens of thousands um, of um, smart dolls on every month, and it's completely different. Um, it's still um, kept in Japan. Um, the molds um, cost a lot, uh, but the unit cost is, is much more cheaper. And um, so first off, we'll be selling them as a pre-built uh, models, and then later down the line we'll be sending them as kits so that you can put them together yourself. And uh, this is what kit looks like. Uh, the soft vinyl, uh, we continue to uh, make in Japan. And uh, the molds uh, for the injection molding, uh, they are also made in Japan as well. So we started off uh, using like 3D prototyping, um, and uh, this went on for a very long time. Very long time. So I've actually been working on this for like three years uh, in the background. And I knew that soft vinyl was just not um, a scalable solution. It's, you just can't uh, make the numbers. And I really do believe that smart dolls should be in the, hands, in the hands of more people around the world at a more affordable price. And this is, this is plastic kit. This is smart doll cortex. And I'm very proud of it. And um, I would say, if you don't really look close, you won't be able to see the um, seam lines. And I think she looks absolutely fantastic. And this is how you put together. Uh, the pieces latch on up to the frame. Like so. Okay, so pocket dog. I was going to raise the wide knot 1-6 scale, because I wasn't too sure what I should mention there. So there is going to be a smaller version of a smart door. And I couldn't get around to it because Cortex just took up all of my time. It put me in hospital, for Christ's sakes. And uh, but now that it's done, um, I can focus on the smaller version of a smart door. Now, one of the main reasons that I am uh, going ahead with um, Pocket dog is that in hospital, um, so I've got spinal hernia and it's, I get these attacks when I like, lift something heavy, for example. And um, these girls are great, um, but I would like something lighter uh, to carry around with me. So that's the main reason uh, why we are going to like, make them the smaller girls. Uh, we've made some prototypes. They look really, really nice, really, really good. They're not going to be 1-6 scale. Uh, I think uh, the market has enough 1-6 uh, scale uh, dolls. 
and uh, they're going to be slightly bigger. Um, we want to have basically exactly the same um, sort of detail that we can uh, acquire with this scale um, for the smaller girls. And basically we've done lots of different prototyping, and we went smaller, 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 and then we reached the point whereby any smaller, the hair just like looks really weird, the clothes look really weird, and it's because they're physically um, not possible to acquire the sort of detail that we want on, uh, on a mass production level, so, which is why they're not going to be one six six scale. So um, it's going to be hopefully ready by the time I get back to Japan end of this month, and then hopefully I'll be able to like, um, show it to you later on. Mirai Kari, I really wanted to show you Mirai Kari. Do I have, we promise to leave straight away. Promise to leave straight away. Okay. So, uh, real quick. So, um, so this is uh, the bag which um, I put Mirai in over here. And it's um, basically what you do is we're going to grab this girl over here and you just fold and we go in like this. We've got like a hard back over there, all right? And we go in like this and then you just close up and zip up. And then on the other side, you've got space for your cameras, your snacks. And then you can move these compartments up and down. So um, I really wanted a bag like this so that I can take my camera out without taking the doll out and then vice versa. And this is going to be available. Um, I think they're going online after I can take something like decent photos. Anyway, that was um, me and I carry. <laughs> so uh, this is what I started off with. And uh, this was a strap that went over here. But because of my hernia, weight wasn't distributed properly. And so which is why it turned out into a, a double strap. And um, this is how I do my prototyping, I make everything in paper. And uh, I don't usually carry around this sort of stuff, uh, but um, you can if you want to. And, uh, but it's, it's great for like, um, not just your dog, but for your other uh, bits and pieces as well. Okay, uh, since we spoke, uh, we launched uh, four more Coco Girls. You're going to see like a ton more, uh, because I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I haven't got a name for this uh, kitty girl yet, uh, but um, she's in production right now. Uh, Mira Plus, that's going to be uh, available uh, sometime early next year. The frame we've been prototyping for about a year now, and um, I think we're nearly final. So this is going to be available um, online as well, in all colours. Uh, this is an example of where our customers are um, in the US. And um, now that we have um, Cortex, and now that we have Sensei, who's going to get us in schools um, all over um, the US, we want to, uh, we want to do um, some sort of like tour um, of the US next year, like a smart tour, tour. it could be like a, a convention or a doctor show. Uh, we also want to have like outlets <coughs> over here as well. Before I was thinking just on the California side, but over on this side, uh, there's lots of you um, out over here. So we need to figure out um, where the best place is. Japan, we got that covered as well. And Europe, we got that covered as well. And uh, before I forget, uh, if you use the code ANIMENYC, um, on the website right now, you get 10% off absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. So, um, we brought some dolls. Um, we, didn't, um, we didn't bring like a lot to sell, and uh, our main purpose uh, to be at these events uh, is to basically meet you and to let people know about the product. So, we, we don't get to like, bring lots of stuff. But uh, lots of people have said that uh, they wanted to um, part, uh, part with the money. <laughs> and, um, so, you can actually use this code uh, if you want to uh, on the website. Anime NYC, all one word. Is it lowercase? Lowercase. Oh, by the way, that's I Chan. All right. <coughs> so it's a, it's not a girl. Uh, it's a, it's a guy, and uh, he manages our customer support. By the way. So um, this is only uh, this only works until like Monday. So um, if you want to get some goodies, um, you can do so um, if you want. And uh, that's it. I think I think we're done. I think two minutes over. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I was wondering, if you're not camera shy, uh, I'd love a group photo. It'll be okay. Yep. So I'm going to run down over here. Get